Welcome back. It's good to be with you today. If you're at all like me, you want to experience joy on a daily basis, but you're still just not sure how to get there. We have to start with a definition that joy isn't about happy feelings, but about the assurance that God is in control of the details of our lives. It's about developing confidence that because He is in control, ultimately everything will be okay. And it is a moment by moment, deliberate decision to choose joy no matter what. Have you noticed how ridiculously easy it is to look for joy in all the wrong places? I mean, we all desperately want it, but somehow we head off in the complete opposite direction in our search. So let's talk about some of the typical ways that you might try to find joy. These are the places where I've gotten caught. The number one place I go for joy in my life is to the people in my life. This is a big one. It's probably the one that trips everybody up the most every single day. And even though we know better, we expect the people around us to meet our needs, to take care of us, to make us happy, to understand us, to appreciate us. And we expect them to love us 100% right, 100% of the time. And when they don't or they can't, we get mad and hurt or feel betrayed and abandoned. It's incredibly challenging to feel joyful when the people closest to us let us down or disappoint us, especially if we're looking to them as the main source of our joy. I hate to tell you this, but people will fail you on a regular basis. Possessions is another false place of joy. It's a typical place that a lot of us go to to look for joy. Our material belongings or our lack of them have a way of shaping our joy. A new pair of shoes, a new computer program, a better car, a better lawnmower, all have the power to improve our mood and our outlook. I mean, they don't call it retail therapy for nothing. Another source of false joy for us is places. You know, where we live, it's, it's key to our sense of fulfillment and joy. Which side of town, which side of the street, which side of the tracks, what city, what state, what country, who are our neighbors, what view, what shape our house is in, what our yard looks like. These are powerful drivers in our search for joy. Position or status is another place that a lot of us go to for joy. And for many, this can make or break our level of contentment. Where do I fit on the totem pole at work? Am I climbing up the ladder fast enough? Who's ahead of me? Who do I need to knock down so that I can advance? More importantly, who is behind me? Who's sneaking up behind me wanting, wanting to knock me off of my perch? Well, you know what these four sources of joy have in common? As I've said, they are all false. They all fail to deliver long term. They all disappoint and they fail to satisfy the deepest longings for joy in our soul. That's why the Bible says in Matthew 6, 19 to 21, Don't store up for your treasures on earth where moth and rust destroy and where thieves break in and steal. But store up for yourselves treasures in heaven where moth and rust do not destroy and where thieves do not break in and steal. For where your treasure is, there your heart will be also. People, possessions, places, and positions, they're all just too flimsy to hold up the weight of our expectations and our desires to experience joy. Tomorrow we'll talk about one more false source in our search for joy. I'll see you then.